appeals. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20, this public meeting is available in remote form. Please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast. Um, with us this evening is our assistant town planner, Alvaro Esparza, who will be uh, controlling the Zoom feed this evening. Uh, and first order of business will be to call the meeting to order and take a roll call. I, John Trefethen, am present. I, Brian Forrestal, am present. I, Stuart Siegel, am present. I, Anton Takamarov, am present. I, Ryan Sullivan, am present. Okay. And as I mentioned uh, before we got started, um, our member Nathan Band is unable to uh, join us this evening. Uh, first or second item on our agenda after calling the meeting to order is a discussion with Sunitha Kara, who had expressed interest in uh, joining the board as an associate member. Um, I don't see um, Ms. Kara listed as anyone who's here participating at the Zoom meeting. Alvaro, is um, is Ms. Kara signed on to us? No, I also have John. Okay. Well, why don't we skip over that? And if she does um, appear, we can um, we can take um, that matter up at that time. Moving on to item number three, a continued hearing for 59 West Union Street. This is a public hearing that opened on February 14th, was continued to February 28th, continued thereafter to March 14th, continued thereafter to April 11th, and then to this evening. I'll um, read the uh, notice briefly. The Ashland Zoning Board of Appeals will reopen and continue the public hearing to hear the petition of Emory Bond and Brandon Bond, trustees of the Island Pond Trust, who have applied to the ZBA to appeal the Building Commissioner's determination under Ashland Zoning Bylaws, Section 9.2.2.3, parenthesis Board of Appeals, close parenthesis, along with any other applicable sections of the Ashland Zoning Bylaws, the Building Commission's enforcement letter dated November 31st, 2022, states the recent expansion of the pre-existing non-conforming use is in violation of the Ashland bylaws. The property in question is located at 59 West Union Street, <clears throat> Assessors Map 19, Lot 63, in the Highway Commerce Zoning District, and parties wishing to be heard on the matter should appear at the time and place indicated above. Um, that being said, at our last meeting, we uh, took a vote to close the uh, public uh, comment. Um, since then, we have received um, three items that I would consider public comment uh, that should properly be entered into the record, I believe. So I think we need to reopen the public comment section session once again for entry of these uh, items into the record. We have a uh, submission by an attorney on behalf of one of the abutters, which was referenced uh, at our last meeting, uh, but the report and exhibits were forwarded to the uh, planning department, uh, not in time to be forwarded to the board members. And we also, uh, have received a written submission by the uh, applicants uh, together with another written submission by their council. And then today we received two letters uh, for, or a letter from uh, two letters from two abutters, um, all of which asked to be uh, included in the public record. And I think it's appropriate that we do so. Would someone like to make a motion to reopen uh, public comment? Or a discussion so, about that? So, so moved. Okay, 
Is there a I second? second okay. I second that motion. Okay, thank you, Stu. I, John Trefethen, vote in favor. I, Brian Forrestal, vote in favor. I, Stuart Siegel, vote in favor. I, Anton Kamara, vote in favor. I, Ryan Sullivan, vote in favor. Excellent. And for the record, let me read what those documents are. I'm not going to read um, all of each document because they're rather lengthy. Uh, a letter with attachments from attorney Jonathan Silverstein dated April 10th, 2023 uh, on behalf of one of the butters, Mr. Rodenheiser. Again, that was referenced and talked about at our last meeting. We have another copy of the November 31st, 2022 letter from building commissioner Douglas Scott to Brandon Bond and Emery Bond, again, dated November 31st, 2022. Attached to that are the uh, certified mail and return receipt uh, certificates for the letter, referencing that it was delivered on 7 November, 2022. Thereafter, we have a uh, letter from attorney George F. Connors representing the applicants dated April 20th, uh, 2023, consisting of three pages plus attachments. And thereafter, we have a, what I would call, I guess, a memorandum filed by the applicants, the trustees of Island Pond Trust uh, addressed to the Ashland Zoning Board of Appeals, dated April 24th, 2023. Uh, consisting of uh, like five pages plus attachments. We have a letter from Jeffrey Marcus, of 65 West Union Street, uh, dated April 24th, 2023, uh, addressed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And to summarize, it speaks in, um, in support of the applicants. And then an email from Jeff Stone uh, of Not sure what his address is, but he refers to himself as a direct abutter to 59 West Union Street. Again, an email dated April 25th, uh, 2023. And summarizing, he um, also speaks in behalf of the, and in support of the applicants. Um, that being said, um, Attorney Connors, I believe, when we um, last left us at the hearing uh, last last week, the issue of the timeliness of the filing of the appeal of the um, building commissioner's decision was what we were talking about. And at that point, the meeting was continued to give you uh, an opportunity to uh, respond and also to give the board an opportunity to look at the uh, letter from attorney Silverstein. Um, all of that being said, um, what would you like, would you like to uh, say something at this point or rely on your written submission of April 20th? I believe you're muted, Attorney Connors. Sorry about that. Um, I, I'd like to just briefly touch on that memo tangentially, um, if that's all right, what has happened. Certainly. In the interim, when we uh, went to investigate this, there were additional um, email communications to the bonds from the building inspector. There's also a, um, what I call a, uh, for uh, records from a um, 
an attorney on July, the late July, which I think um, really goes directly to this matter, asking for all sorts of records from the town um, regarding Bond's operation on their property. Uh, I don't know what records were actually turned in to them from this request. But um, having seen that and the fact that the bonds from 2000, from before 2019, with walks with the planning board, attending planning board meetings on the impending zoning change, um, have worked diligently to try and ascertain and protect their rights as a contractor's yard out there. And we submitted an awful lot of uh, Google imagery to show the areas that had been used. Um, so I do think that there's a lot of layers to this that um, really are prejudicial to the bonds. And I don't know why, why that is. Um, clearly they've had a lot of conversations, upfront conversations on the use of that property, especially considering the impending zoning change. And that they were with the building inspector and the town manager and uh, others in town relative to this uh, for days and weeks and perhaps months from, from July 28th where that letter came in sometime around there till the um, November time period where various orders were issued and discussed. Well, I think they were very confused and quite frankly shocked by what was taking place when it's pretty clear that everybody um, associated with this knew that they were A, protecting and B, had um, operated out there for a long time. And I think our uh, submission with past plans um, indicating the barn was not a residential barn um, in 1970s um, really goes to the, uh, the, the point of this. They shouldn't have to go get another permit to operate what we believe is pre-existing non-conforming. There's been a lot of money spent on this. And I don't think it's um, really appropriate for the uh, members of the town, the bonds, to have to go through this when it's pretty apparent. Um, the building inspector in his um, November 9th uh, email said, cease allowing the tenant to use the space to the right of the house and remove the accessory structure. Well, they have removed the accessory structure post um, that letter or email, and they are prepared to have the uh, contractor who rents as a tenant and simply uses his truck to go back and forth to work. Yes, he does have a trailer, and yes, he does have a um, little um, mini excavator, they call it. And they'll put that up in the backyard so we can comply with that November 9th, 2022 email. Uh, and I think that's where we'd like to rest on this and simply dispense of it. I, I just don't see why this makes sense. I don't think this is fair to the bonds. And I will um, yield to you and questions. I do believe the bonds want to discuss anything if there is anything to discuss. Well, they certainly have an opportunity to do so, um, Attorney you. Connors. Um, and I guess from my perspective, and obviously all of the members of the board will have an opportunity to address this, but the initial jurisdiction that we have <clears throat> on an appeal of a building commission order, which is what was done, has to be done within the time period set by the statute. And the statute provides for a time period of 30 days. We have the somewhat confusing uh, date of the letter being November 31st, 2022. However, it was clearly mailed and received on November 7th, 2022. We have an email uh, from uh, Emery Bond, one of your clients uh, addressed to um, Mr. Scott, Peter Magic, the town planner, um, the town manager, the assistant town manager, dated Wednesday, November 9th, acknowledging receiving the letter dated November 31st. Um, 
There's a response from Mr. Scott um, later, just minutes later on November 9th, saying, as stated in my letter, you may file an appeal on my determination. And there are several more emails back and forth, uh, finalized by one uh, November 9th saying, at 8.28 a.m., saying, explaining why he filed his, uh, sent his letter. So it seems, and then we have your letter of December 16th, 2022, wherein you notice that, note that this is an appeal pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 15. So even if we use the December 16th date and not the date that is contained on the, the application to Zoning Board of Appeals uh, standard form, which was entered on December 22nd, it seems that it's 30 days after actual notice, beyond 30 days after actual notice, in beyond 30 days after constructive notice. So I, I don't see what, what jurisdiction we have at this point to, to uh, rule on the building commissioner's um, decision. Brian, you're, I'm sorry, Attorney Connors. Mr. Connor, Mr. Chair, I would like, I'd like to address the board if that's possible. So um, I did forward over an email earlier today from the assistant town planner who helped guide us in, in this process. I'm not sure if you've seen that email, but if not, I could share my screen and I could show you that email. Um, um, it was not It was not submitted um, as far as I know. I don't think it got forwarded to us. Yeah, I, I, I it was meant to be sent last week and I noticed it wasn't received, so I sent a follow-up email this morning. Um, for it to be submitted to the record. Um, but uh, if I could share my screen, I could show you that email and uh, give you the direction that we were given from the town in regards to this matter. Okay. Alvaro, can you give um, Mr. Yes. Bond the uh, power to do that? Yes. Uh, Sir Bond, I think that you should be able to share your screen. I don't know. Can you see my screen? Mm, no, it's up now. There we go. Now he's working. All right. So if you can see my screen, um, this was an email dated November 9th, shortly after I met with Doug Scott um, in person at the town of Ashland. Um, and it says, hello, Emma. I was just in town hall and I spoke with Doug Scott regarding the zoning appeals letter that he sent me that was dated November 31st, 2022. I'm looking to appeal that letter. And I was wondering if you could explain to, me, explain to me the process of getting the zoning board of appeals process going. Please send me back the next steps and I'll get the ball ro rolling. Thank you, Emery Bond. It was only on November 17th, which was almost two weeks after I sent that initial email. Ms. Snellings wrote back. Hello, thank you for reaching out to the zoning board of, uh, about the zoning board of appeals process. I have attached the application. Please let me know if you have any questions on that. You can mail in your application or submit it in person at town hall. You will need an abutters list and property card, and these can be requested from the assessor's office. You will need to apply within 30 days of the date of the building commissioner's letter, which we all know is November 31st, 2022. This was on November 17th, 2022. And she sent me the application. So. It was at that point that was the only only guidance that I had that we had to go off of to base our appeal, and we filed our appeal on December twenty seventh, twenty twenty two, which is thirty days within thirty days of the presumed November thirty first date. Well, Mr. Bond, I would note that there was an email from Mr. Scott to you dated November ninth at seven thirty six a.m. Staying, quote, as I stated in my letter, you may file an appeal on my determination, uh, end quote. Subsequently, there was an email dated the same day from Bremery at 
gmail.com. Um, and it was from you, um, dated November 9th at 8, 11 a.m., stating, Doug, quote, before I file any application with the Zoning Board of Appeal, I would like to know why you issued your letter, uh, end quote. And Mr. Scott replied uh, 17 minutes later. Um, Yes, I, I'm aware of those emails. Um, the director from Mr. Scott was to talk to Ms. Snellings about the process. I reached out to Ms. Snellings. She told me I had 30 days from the date of the letter. I have no other date to go off of. That, that's you, Mr. Bond, do you acknowledge you received the letter on November 7th, which would be 24 days before the date of the letter? Yes, it was, it was confusing to us too how we received a letter that was presumably in the future before we received it, but we, we questioned him on it. He could have rescinded the letter. He could have reissued the letter. He chose not to. That's the only letter that we had to work off of. And okay. from the guidance of uh, the assistant town planner, Ms. Snellings, she gave us 30 days from the date of that letter. And that's all I had to work off of. You, you, can, you can see my confusion on that, but unfortunately that was the directive given from town officials. I'm not going to argue Mr. with you, Mr. Bond, but one of your November 9th emails indicates you knew you had to you had to appeal something be, with the Zoning Board of Appeals. From that letter, the no November 31st letter. But you acknowledge you received the letter on November 7th. So clearly the date, late date of the letter was not November. It was even though it was dated November 31st, the letter was received constructively by you and you had constructive knowledge well before November 31st. Again, I'm not an expert in this. I had not sought right to uh, counsel on this. So I got directive from the town mm -hmm. assistant town uh, planner. I sought out uh, representation from attorney Connors and that's when we submitted the application. I had, I, this was a shock to me that we received the letter. I'm not an expert in this field. Um, the, the message from the town assistant town planner was pretty clear and that's what we followed. Okay. May I interject? Certainly, Attorney Connors. November, we all know that there's several dates here. We all know that Mr. Bond is not aware of when he should file and how many days from receipt. He did make efforts understand this again after having spent inordinate amounts of time from 2019 on but the november 9th the earliest um order by the building inspector is cease allowing the tenant to use the space to the right of the house and remove the structure if we go back to that and he does all that stuff applies with that then i don't think that they should be um going any more forward with this now that they can comply. That's one option. The other is for the board to do whatever they want, and then we'll let the um, whatever appeal would be necessary um, take place. As I indicated, there was a case um, that I found where um, the appeals court, where there were numerous dates on a request for the building inspector to act, and the 30 days had long expired and the court allowed that process to go forward at a later date. So um, I think that we, we feel confident, A, that we could um, prevail and get an equitable jurisdiction from the court. But for what, what, what is that gonna tell us? We're gonna move the um, tenant's pickup uh, trailer to the back of the property as requested in the November 9th. I'm trying to make this easy for these folks. They have spent a bit of time trying to prove that they are and protect their property on commercial use. Well, Attorney Connors, if, you're, if your position is that your clients have complied with the instructions of the building commissioner, why don't you just withdraw your appeal and that ends the matter? Well, um, we, we would do that, but we'd really like to get, because of all 
the work that they've done from 2019 pending dealing with that zoning change and ascertaining it. We have various documents from the town that says they would be grandfathered. We'd like to get that on the record so they don't have to go through this again. But we certainly are able to withdraw. You don't even have to make a decision. You can just let it go and it kind of expires. So there's two or three different things we could do. But really, in fairness to these folks, they ran a contractor's yard. Their father ran a contractor's yard. The area, if you look at it, and I visited again this weekend and walked it, it's clear it's been a contractor's yard for a long, long time. Well, I mean, Attorney Connors, as you recall, we saw guidance of town council early on in this matter as far as what our authority was, because you said you were seeking a uh, in substance, a section six finding. Finding. Yes. Uh, yes. And the opinion of town council is that the Ashland bylaws do not provide for such a finding by the Zoning Board of Appeals that it has to be by way of a special permit because we're the special permit granting authority and that you needed to file a special permit application uh, in order to bring that together along with the appeal of the building commissioner's order. You have not done that, and that is certainly your right, um, but we, we don't, based on the advice of our council, um, we don't have the authority to do that. And without a special permit application being filed so that it's and publicly noticed uh, and published for the, to the public, we don't have the authority to grant a special permit if we, if we chose to do so. So you know, we're sort of, I think we're sort of constrained. And again, I'm doing all the talking, so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to keep it from, you know, I'll encourage other board members to, uh, to speak up uh, on this if you think I'm going off on the wrong analysis on this, but I, I just don't see where where we go. Well, let if, me ask if you if, you, if your if your if your clients have complied with the letter of the building inspector and it's with and your appeal is withdrawn, then presumably your clients will continue uh, with their business and in compliance with the a letter of the building commissioner and there won't be there won't be any any problems you referenced the legal decision from that case by the mass appeals court and that obviously as you know dealt with a uh, in a butter who filed numerous uh, requests with the building commissioner at that point um, saying that her neighbor was not operating uh, appropriately within a non-conforming use. And she filed numerous complaints, many of which she didn't appeal. And the appeals court held it was too late because it was beyond 30 days. But the last one she appealed and it was within 30 days. And they said that she could go forward with that. And they reviewed, reviewed, reversed the land court judge. Mm -hmm. uh, who would rule that you can't keep filing, uh, but the appeals court said that you could. So it's a different situation. Uh, but what I'm saying is if you withdraw the appeal and your clients have had their tenant comply with um, his order in his November 31st, 2022 letter, I don't know what we're fighting about. I don't think we're fighting. Please, okay. Please. I mean, I is that. I mean, so that I think. Well, you know, fighting in the in the legal sense and not okay. uh, right. not in any other sense. I, a very inappropriate uh, use of the word. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, I don't think we're arguing about anything. Um, really, Stu, Anton, Ryan, any any thoughts on this? Um, Ryan's over here. I would just like some clarity. So, are, are you prepared to withdraw the uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll draw the appeal at this point. Ryan, we're having a difficult time, time hearing you. You're very soft. One second, I'll fix that, sorry. I suspect your computer instead of your headphones are picking up your mic. Yeah, can you hear me better now? Yes. Much better. Thank you very much. Uh, so yes, my, my question was, Attorney Khan, is I'm, I'm still a little unclear. Are we withdraw Are you withdrawing the appeal at this point or not? Could you give me a minute? Certainly. Can I mute? I'm going to mute. Is that all right for a minute? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Um, we will therefore appeal. Um, we will withdraw, withdraw without prejudice. Am I on? Uh, I'm sorry. So you withdraw are. without without withdraw without prejudice. Uh, I mean, obviously, this decision at this point is well past thirty days. So this is the sole opportunity to appeal this decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Attorney Connors, when you say without prejudice, are you ref are you referring to the request for a section six order? Or I'm not quite sure what without prejudice means. So we we would be concerned that there would be another order against this property. And we would want to be able to appeal that if indeed it came. Well, certainly that, I mean, the, the appeals court decision that you referenced would certainly uh, support that. I mean, each, each order or each abutter's complaint stands on its own and references a new 30-day uh, appeal order, uh, a time frame order. And um, if there were to be another one, I'm I'm sure your clients now are well aware of the 30 day period in which to appeal, uh, painfully so. Um, so, so I just wanna make sure we, we sort of wrap, we're all on the same page about how this is going to be, be wrapped up. Um, you, your clients will withdraw their yes. application. I will do that, yes. Okay. And once that is done, I don't think there's anything else that the board needs to do. Brian, Stu, Anton, Ryan, thoughts on anything else that we would need to do to... Uh, if the um, application is withdrawn? Should we get confirmation from the building inspector that, that, that he's uh, okay with this action? Well, I don't think he has. So he's aware of what's going on with the property? That I don't, that I don't know. Um, however, like any other property, um, I mean, I, I don't think we have the, I don't think we have the authority nor, nor should we hold this matter to give the building commissioner an opportunity to look to see if the um, applicants have complied with his restriction. I don't think that's within our, our purview. If they withdraw their appeal, then his letter with its restrictions stands 
And if at some point he finds that they are not in compliance with that, then the bylaws and uh, the bylaws provide for uh, enforcement penalties, which frankly are substantial. Uh, so uh, I don't think we need to get the, the building commissioner's uh, approval for uh, allowing the uh, applicant to withdraw its appeal. Anton? I'm just wondering a little bit on the flip side, and this this maybe is still with, kind of not within the scope of our authority, but if the position is that they have complied with the building commissioner's order and the kind of soft recommendation of this board is to just withdraw the appeal, but then it comes back that the building commission that the, the building commissioner disagrees. Um, I mean they'll they'll be well past their 30 day period. I don't know if there's anything we can really do about that, but just it could be slightly prejudicial to the bonds. Well, again, either that or we, you know, go forward and if we take a vote and find that the appeal wasn't filed in a timely fashion, uh, they're sort of back in the same spot they were in, I would I would think. Um, if, if there were a later finding of a violation, they would have the ability to obviously oppose that finding separately and that's you know done through a different different form so i mean i don't you know it's their appeal is 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 withdrawn through this proceeding um i don't think we have anything else really to concern ourselves with uh going forward unless there's a later determination that they appeal again but that would be separate from any enforcement of of a violation of the current order correct correct So, so if the if the bonds withdraw their appeal, does that mean that the property is clear for the bonds to function on a daily basis without any sort of uh, current repercussions from the town? Well, I can't speak for any other entity of of the the town uh, what what they would be able to do i presume is operate their business um and comply as a non-conforming pre-existing use and if um that is challenged by uh, the building commissioner or by someone else um then there would be perhaps another proceeding started or an appeal star filed and it would wend its way back through uh, the system probably to come back before the zoning board of appeals uh, okay well that's that's all i was was curious about whether you know if if the bonds withdraw their appeal and we look forward to tomorrow they're clear to function with their business as long as it's within the um restrictions uh, placed by um the building commissioner in his november 31st 2022 letter where he asked them to take certain action so as long as they've done that um then they have complied with his well that's what i'm that's that's the point that i'm trying to make is that bonds want to get some, I suspect the bonds want to get some sort of feedback from the building inspector said, okay, uh, I'm happy, proceed with your business. And I think that's what they're looking for. But now it's kind of up in the air because no one is, the building inspector hasn't responded to the fact that, you know, the they have done what he uh, asked them to do. Well, I don't know that he was required to re to respond to them. Um, uh, so well, it, it's a no news is good news situation. Obviously, if you know, I don't, I don't think we'll, I don't, I don't think we'll get a building commissioner coming out and saying 
you're in compliance. They're, 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 they'll only tell you when you're not. Okay. Well, John, is uh, it uh, John? Is it possible to reread the original letter from the building commissioner? If I remember, it's relatively short, but if you could just refresh what the yeah. The hold on. Was. Hold on just a minute. I had it here in front of me. Okay, um, I'll, I'll read it. Um, it's addressed to the bonds. Uh, it has been brought to my attention that you have increased your business footprint by having a separate contractor taking up space to the right of the house within the front yard setback. You have also had an accessory building added to the right of the existing house behind the white vinyl fence that you installed. Under the town of Ashland zoning ordinance, your business is considered pre-existing non-conforming, et cetera, which does not allow a contract to share out into today's zoning ordinances. Any increase in use requires a special permit from the ZBA for an expand for the expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use. Also, the accessory structure that was added is in violation of section 4.1.3 as accessory structures may not be located within the required yards. And this structure must be moved in the expanded use located with the fenced in area must also be removed until such time as you receive approval from the zoning uh, board of appeals. And should you be agreed by this determination, you may file an appeal. So if I counted right there would noted four violations well they were sort of um i suppose depending upon how you count them there were two or there were four basic all right so the Subcontractors gone and the accessory building has been moved out of the setback. Is that the contention? That was my understanding from what Attorney Connors uh, represented. The contractor, the subcontractor, will be removed from the front according to the November 9th requirement of the building inspector, which was least allowing the tenant to use the space to the right of the house and to remove the accessory structure. I'm not gonna let the tenant put his equipment in the front right corner of the house. And the accessory structure was removed back in December. So the tenant's still there just in a different part of the property and the accessory structure was moved, the accessory building was moved out of the setback. Correct. Tenant is a residential tenant. He has his he, he rents the house to live in. He doesn't run a business there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So to be clear, I, I guess I want to just circle back to the without prejudice aspect. I don't understand what would be without prejudice. We believe that there is a lot going on on this. And as we go down and do additional research, we just figured that we need to be assured that in our appeal, somebody would recognize that we've been there for years operating a contractor yard. It seems that in the, uh, the building inspector's orders, all of a sudden, what are you guys doing out there? And the bonds have spent months and years dealing with the town prior to zoning change. 
and all of a sudden they're told, notwithstanding the violation of the shed. We, we understand that. You, you know, we, we're going around in circles. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the one, our, we've given you the opinion of town council of how to go about doing, getting an affirmative ruling from this board if it chooses to give an affirmative ruling and you haven't done it. So we have what we can do, which is we can grant or deny. We have to, I say we have to, would have to deny the appeal because it's beyond the 30 day period. And I, for one, would rule that we don't have the legal authority to make a section six finding. And then that would be on the record. And I don't know that you want that necessarily. Um, it would seem to me the, the classic way to go would be to simply withdraw your appeal with prejudice, because the appeal would be of the order of November 31st, 2022, which I think any way you look at it, you have to concede it was beyond 30 days. And I don't believe we have any equitable jurisdiction to extend that period. Um, uh, and then you're obviously free to file a special permit request if you so choose or to, for your clients to go on with their business. And if nobody says anything, then they're good to operate as they you know, assert that they have operated for a number of years. But the without prejudice, That's you know, usually when we allow someone to do something without prejudice, I mean, it gives them the right to refile, like a, for a, a special permit or a variance request with new evidence or something. But this is a, it's like a statute of limitations. You can have the greatest case in the world, but if you're beyond the three-year statute of limitations, you're out of luck. And you know the 30-day appeal period is a 30-day appeal period. Let's leave it at that. I'm not going to agree about the appeal period. Let's leave it as we discussed up to this point. We will withdraw the thing in writing tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, what I would suggest is why don't we continue this uh, to our next scheduled meeting uh, just to make sure everything is, is done. Uh, I have no doubt that you will do what you said, Attorney Connors, but um, there'll be no need to reappear at the next hearing date. Um, but if we don't continue it tonight, and if the question arises, then I think we have to republish in the paper and it gets expensive, so we don't want to do that. Um, I can, Alvaro, I can, sorry? I could send you an email now, but we can do it your way. Yeah, I, I would feel, you know, just so everybody's on the same page and there's no confusion or no more than the normal amount of confusion I find myself in and uh, we go with go with that. Elvara, what would be our next scheduled um, meeting? I'll double check right now, John. Okay. Be the second Tuesday in May. Correct, it will be May 9th. May 9th. Um, Brian, Stu, Anton, Ryan, um, in agreement on this? I'm in agreement. Yes, just looking at dates, but yeah. Okay, then would someone like to make a motion to continue this matter uh, to May 9th at 7 o'clock? So Is so there moved. a second? Second. Aye, John Trefethen, vote in favor. Aye, Brian Forrestal, vote in favor. I Stuart Siegel vote in favor. I Anton Takamara vote in favor. I Ryan Sullivan vote in favor. Excellent. Okay, thank you, um, Attorney Connors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and to your clients, the Bond brothers, uh, wish you good luck. Thank you for your patience and time. Good night. Good night. Um, I see um, that. Ms. Cara appears to have joined our meeting. 
um, so that um, perhaps we can go back to item number two on the agenda and that it would be a discussion with her about her uh, interest in possibly uh, joining the um, ZBA. Ms. Cara, can you hear us and unmute yourself? Yes, I can hear you all. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you for thank you for being here. Uh, I know you had filled out a, a talent bank form several months ago and had attended a meeting uh, where we all sort of discussed your interest in joining the ZBA as an associate member and pardon me while I flip through my papers trying to find the papers I had um, set aside for this um, and you're now you wanted to take some time to to consider whether you wish to uh, to join us or or not and the fact that you're you're back again is an encouraging uh, or encouraging uh, sign, I guess. Uh, and your thoughts about uh, joining the um, joining the ZBA if the select board uh, should choose to appoint you. Yeah, I, uh, I would consider it as my privilege. I want to understand um, what's happening, how does this appeals go, um, and everything that's being talked about. Uh, I think this is my second meeting, and... Um, you know, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to uh, work with everyone. Okay. And you understand that we meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of the month, generally, uh, although the fourth Tuesday only if there is a business that brings us together. Would that be a, um, would that be a problem for you? No, I think after seven, uh, typically I have a class from 6.15 to 7.15. So every every Tuesday, whenever we have to meet second or fourth Tuesday, I can join 15 minutes late, but I can do <clears throat> the evening works for me. Okay. Um, questions for Ms. Cara, fellow board members? <laughs> I have a question. If we're supposed to begin at seven o'clock and call the roll, uh, I don't know how how we can conduct business um, without a member present during that time as a point of order. That's my only question. Well, I think it's a good it's a good question. I suppose we could we could do what the planning board does which is to start their meetings at 7.15. Uh, I don't know why they do that, but I suspect it may be because one of their members has a, uh, and I see Alvaro sh shaking his head, yeah, and perhaps usually, has a, has a yeah. conflict. So yep. um, if we were to choose to do that, we could. I'm not suggesting we should or we shouldn't. It would be subject to, to discussion. Uh, it would also, I think, probably be uh, a matter for the select board to consider uh, when it, if it can, if we vote to um, advance Ms. Cara's application along to them, it would only be fair to point point that out. And whether that would um, present a problem for any of us, it, it wouldn't be a problem for me. But um, you know, I won't speak for your your others. Ms. Carr, um, is that class something that's going to continue indefinitely, or is that like you get to the end of the semester and then next year there might be a little bit of a different schedule? Do you, do you have a sense of that? Uh, yeah, this particular class uh, like is always on Tuesday at 6.15 to 7.15 every Tuesday. But that being said, I feel bad that for one member, uh, others have to make a change. I am, I think, willing to forego because it's only going to be not all Tuesdays, just two Tuesdays of the month. Um, I will ask my teacher if she has a way to move it 
I doubt it because there's a lot of um, uh, people who join from Colorado and other places, which is only five o'clock for them. Uh, but I think I can skip early um, one I mean, on those days instead of you moving the meeting just for one member. Okay. Um, Ryan, you're speaking, but I don't know if you're speaking to us. No, I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> Just making sure we didn't forget the mute. Nothing personal there, I hope. That's okay. <laughs> um, okay. Ms. Carr, do you have any experience with um, land, land use or sort of legal proceedings, semi-legal proceedings like, like we do here? I, I know you have an MBA from Framingham State and you're an IT manager, so certainly if we you could solve any of our Zoom problems, probably <laughs> so, which yeah, would be that, very valuable. Thank you. Um, apart from my IT experience and the MBA from uh, the Framingham State, the bylaws and everything else I have heard is when uh, we have a business resource group called uh, Women Rock Tech at my company. I'm a part of that. Uh, I'm a big sponsor of uh, that. I bring in a lot of speakers to those events and everything. And recently from a very friendly BRG, we made it very, um, um, made it like an official thing by putting the uh, bylaws and everything. Like how do we, the uh, who are, what are the positions? When do we do elections for that? And all of that. That's the only experience I have somewhat relevant to this. Um, but not anything in legal or um, in the zonal appeals. And how long have you lived in the town of Ashland, if I may ask? Yeah, sure. Uh, 13 and a half years. Okay. Since 2009, uh, November. And any other questions for members of the board? Um, well, the, 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 the procedure, um, Ms. Cara, is to, um, for potential members to meet with us and discuss, discuss things, and then for the board uh, to make a recommendation to the select board, which is the appointing agency. Uh, they're the ones that make the determination whether to appoint someone or or not. Uh, and typically we have that discussion um, after we've um, met with the uh, with the applicant and so we're not hiding anything we discuss in front of the applicant so um, and I guess as, as chairman I'll, I'll volunteer to go first. Um, you know, I think certainly Ms. Cara is bright enough and um, has, um, would be potentially a good associate member. Um, she would bring some diversity to the uh, board because I would point out that at the moment we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six males. Uh, and it might be nice to have um, a different perspective uh, from that. Also, uh, somebody who, like Anton, is a, a little younger than some of our more senior board members, like Stu and myself, and Brian is sort of in the middle there. Uh, you know, I, I think as we did with the last um, candidate, I would... I would be very comfortable in uh, forwarding um, Ms. Cara's application to the select board for consideration and for their appointment if they so choose. Brian, thoughts? Uh, I agree with you, Stu. Uh, John, I'm sorry. That's okay. Stu? I have no problem. Okay. Anton? I agree and would also just say that if 
people did want to push to 715, that would make my life a lot easier too. You should have spoken up earlier, but that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> and Ryan, your thoughts? I, I completely echo Anton on, on both points. Uh, there's a little bit of white knuckling for the seven o'clock. So 7.15 would be even better on my end, but um, I, you know, I certainly we, am in favor of, of uh, recommending this you know, guy on the board. We can take that up with uh, Alvaro and also with Peter um, offline to see how that would how that corresponds with their schedule because we do need uh, the help of uh, at least Alvaro, who is going to be uh, responsible for dealing with us, I think, going forward. Yes, uh, and I can gonna... personally work at 7.15 or 7. It doesn't really make a difference for me, so I'm happy to help either time, but works best for everybody. Okay, good Good to hear. Okay, well, with that respect, um, I think the vote was five to nothing to uh, forward Ms. Carr's application to the select board for consideration as an associate member of the ZBA, and I vote in favor of that. So do I. I vote in favor also. Okay. I vote in favor. I vote in favor as well. Okay, very good. Um, I've been calling you Ms. Cara, but can I call you Sunitha? Yeah, I was going to ask about Thank that. John. I was, I didn't know that if it's legal or something that everybody's calling. I, I, I was taught a long time ago that to call somebody Miss or Mrs. and not just assume <laughs> their first name. Be fine. That's, that, yeah. It's old school, and uh, <laughs> I am nothing if not old school. Uh, okay, I'm um, Sunitha. The way this works is, as the chairman of the board, I will send a a letter to uh, Susan Roby, who was the secretary of the select board. Uh, addressed to the select board, indicating that we have met on several occasions, our discussion tonight and our recommendation. And then you will hear uh, from uh, the select board. Typically they request someone who they do uh, wish to appoint to come before, excuse me, the select board uh, at a meeting. Oftentimes you can do that via Zoom where they have an opportunity to ask questions and then and then take a vote. And they may or may not want me to be uh, present uh, uh, during that uh, process. Um, I will get the uh, email out to them within a couple of days. Uh, we'll copy the full board and you. So you see what we, what we said about you. And uh, hopefully the select board will get back to you uh, soon. Sounds good. Okay, anything further that nope, you want to I, say? Or? Yeah, I was just going to ask how many members, but we just I just came to know that uh, apart from my membership being considered, there are six more members present right. for the DBA. There are three, what we refer to as full members, which are set by the Ashland Zoning Bylaws. And then there are four associate members and the associate members uh, are able to participate in all the meetings and all the hearings, uh, but they only vote on a matter uh, if one of the three members uh, is not available uh, for whatever reason to vote. So if the we have three associate members, Anton and Ryan and Stu, and... Um, the next associate member, there's one open position, uh, which the select board um, will fill at some point. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I believe that concludes um, item number two on the agenda. We've concluded item number three, which leads us to item number four, which are the meeting minutes for our April 11th meeting. Uh, draft minutes were sent out. Um, and I noted one, two, two very, three very minor um, changes. Uh, the numbers of the pages, apart from the first page, I'll say, page 505 and 
that needs to be corrected to properly uh, number the pages. On page three, on the fifth full paragraph, on line three, it says that statute sets four with regards, and it should be fourth with regards, I believe. And then on the next page, uh, on the third paragraph from the bottom, on line three, uh, the letter should have been dated October 31st, 2022, not November 30. It should be not November 31, 2022, which was the cause of much of the confusion for the last matter. Uh, but those are the only minor changes that I had. Anybody else have any potential, any changes, corrections? No. Okay, does somebody wish to make a motion to approve the minutes with those minor uh, changes that I announced? I move we accept the minutes as amended. Is there a second? I second that. Okay. I, John Trefethen, vote in favor. I, Brian Forrestal, vote in favor. I, Stuart Siegel, vote in favor. I, Anton Takamarov, vote present. I, Ryan Sullivan, vote in favor. Excellent. Then that is done. And going on to the fifth and last item on the agenda, staff updates and administrative matters. Um, Alvaro, is there anything in particular to report on that? No, I don't. Nothing to Okay. Um, is there anything in the pipeline that we would anticipate hearing uh, at our next meeting? As of now, no. I know that uh, Peter mentioned that there might be something coming in, but I don't As know of now? exactly. No. As of okay. now, no. Yep. Um, very good. Well, that sounds like we have concluded all of our business for tonight. So would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I move. Second? I second. I, John Trefethen. Oh, sorry, Stu. Didn't mean to jump on your second there in my eagerness to get out of here. I, John Trefethen, vote in favor. I, Brian Forrestal, vote in favor. I, Stuart Siegel, vote in favor. I, Anton Tacamara, vote in favor. I, Ryan Sullivan, vote in favor. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good evening, and we will see you in May. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.